2020. How do I characterize 2020? A horror story. Plain and simple. The way that Donald Trump has faced the pandemic or failed to face the pandemic is the greatest national security blunder we've ever seen in American history. It dwarfs Vietnam. It dwarfs the Iraq war. It's killing our citizens. It's occupying our military. It's eroding our economy. The pandemic is hurting America in ways that Osama bin Laden could have only dreamed of. As the pandemic first bears down on the country. The Democrats want us to fail so badly. Donald Trump sees the virus as a political ploy by Democrats. And this is their new hoax. And when COVID spread is impossible to ignore, Trump attempts to gaslight the nation with false optimism. Now the virus that we're talking about having to do, you know, a lot of people think that goes away in April with the heat, as the heat comes in. Uh, typically that will go away in April. We're in great shape though. But the U.S. is in the worst shape. Could a reason we make up only 4% of the world's population but account for over 20% of the deaths be that so many Americans don't trust authority, the legacy of decades of government lies? All Trump's assurances about the coronavirus going away and that it's just going to disappear and we're all going to be just fine. I think it, those efforts are propaganda that are very similar to the Eisenhower era propaganda that, you know, we can survive a nuclear war. You know, if you just get in your basement, if you just have detergent down there, you can scrub off the radioactive fallout and your family could be okay. Behind closed doors, in conversations with author Bob Woodward, as the virus first begins to spread, Trump shows he understands how deadly the threat is. It goes through air, Bob. That's always tougher than the touch. It's also more deadly than even your strenuous flus. This is deadly stuff. It's not just old, old. Yeah, exactly. To plenty of young people. Meanwhile, misinformation creeps into the mainstream. QAnon followers claim the pandemic is an elaborate ruse to increase authoritarian control over their lives and to undermine their fearless leader. The COVID hoax was in the works years before the election of Donald Trump, but they started fast-tracking it. President Trump was ridiculing the notion of people wearing masks. You see is a pathological, almost sociopathic lack of compassion for other people, not just the American people as a whole, but for the people he works with in his own administration. When Trump contracts COVID himself, he receives care unavailable to virtually any other American. Yet he takes his recovery as proof that taking steps to avoid COVID is somehow a moral failure. Don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. We have forgotten what to expect from a president. Um, especially in moments of disaster. And we are neck deep in it. We're on our own. Supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light. But there's this illusion that there's someone in charge. And then I see the disinfectant. And that's the worst of both worlds. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning? The coronavirus crisis is exposing failures even deeper than a president refusing to protect us. It reveals a mistrust of authority so profound that many won't wear the masks necessary to curb the outbreak. And it lays bare the government's inability to protect the vulnerable. As the country teeters on the abyss, we're witnessing a loss of faith in America itself. I was in the Soviet Union when it collapsed back in 1992. And when I came back to the West, I was shocked by how complacent people were with this presumption that history only went in one direction. Because I've seen that history can go into reverse. And unfortunately, when that happens, it can be brutal. We are in the middle of something that I am not sure that we're going to get out of. 
We are probably more divided than we've ever been in the United States. We're in the grip of a pretty devastating set of circumstances that are going to probably affect us for generations. We're scared. And it's, it's very difficult not to be. But what we can do is exercise our agency. We have to make our choices. We have to not only vote, but we also have to be active. We have to work essentially in the spirit of, you know, the late and great John Lewis to go out and make good and necessary trouble. As America mourns and tears at itself, maybe there's one upside to the horrors of 2020. We're finally facing the legacy of lies that got us here. As these things start to collapse, Americans are starting to realize more and more that they don't have to be powerless. They do not have to accept a world in which they have to sacrifice for the good of a state, particularly when the state doesn't hold up its end of the bargain. Americans are starting to wake up from this mythology that they have been taught and realize that power can come from grassroots organization and solidarity, and we can start to build something real and true and human and reject this militarism of the Cold War.